Mocha AE is found under the Boris FX Mocha category and Mocha Shape is found under the Matte category. But I'm gonna start out right away by saying that Mocha Shape, as far as I can tell, is really only here to be compatible with older versions of Mocha. It's not something you need and it's not even something that you can really use on its own anymore. So we're not even gonna talk about that. Instead, we'll go to the Boris FX Mocha category. Boris FX is the company that runs Mocha and Mocha AE is a stripped down version of Mocha Pro that's bundled with After Effects at no extra cost to you. You can think of Mocha AE to Mocha Pro along the same lines as Cinema 4D Lite versus the full version of Cinema 4D. You can still do a lot of amazing things with Mocha AE. Mocha Pro just has many, many more features, but that doesn't mean that it's not useful. So what I have here is some very important looking scientists looking at probably MRI scans of brains. And I wanna track this monitor right here, right in the middle of these three. And that's exactly what Mocha AE is going to allow me to do. The tracker that's built into After Effects, if I go into window and down to tracker, is great for tracking things like cameras and solving for a 3D scene, or warp stabilizer for correcting shaky footage. But for actually tracking motion, using track points and solving for position, rotation, and scale, it's really a very slow and clunky tracker, and it's not very flexible when it comes to things moving in front of and obstructing what you're trying to track. And once you learn how to use Mocha AE, you'll never really wanna go back to the standard tracker because the method that it uses is just so much more accurate, more flexible, and faster than After Effects built-in tracker. So what I'm gonna do is drag it out to this clip and click on this button right here. And you'll notice this says Launch Mocha AE. And I wanna point out that while this is an effect, it really is just a bridge to an external application, just like Cineware is a bridge to Cinema 4D. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that button and this window is actually larger than my screen recording's bounds. So bear with me for a second. I do wanna point out that this Welcome to Mocha window is going to pop up and it's gonna give you this easy access to the manual and training videos which again, I wanna point out, this is its own application. I'm not covering every single part of Mocha AE because it would take up hours and hours of your time spanning across multiple videos. And there's no need for that because Boris FX has many training videos for you to watch and learn all the ins and outs of this program. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close that window. And again, this is too large of a screen to be able to even show you everything in my screen recording, but I'm just gonna come right up to here where it says Workspace Classic and change it to Essentials. This actually will let me scale it down so that you can see the entire window. It's still pretty crammed, but I'll at least be able to show you everything that we need to see. Now, as you can see, there is a lot going on. This is completely a standalone application. We're just launching it through After Effects. There's a lot to know about, but I'm just gonna show you quickly how we can track this screen and get the track data back into After Effects. And the way we're going to do that is by drawing a mask around that screen and then tracking forward and backward on this clip. And two keyboard shortcuts that are really easy to remember. Z for zoom, I'm just gonna hold that down while clicking and dragging up and down. We'll zoom in and X to pan around. Hold down X and just click and drag to pan that around. So I'm gonna zoom in nice and close here and I'm gonna draw a mask path around this screen. So I'm gonna click on this tool up here, this pen tool with an X on it, which Mocha calls X splines. These are basically like auto bezier masks in After Effects. And what I wanna do is just add mask paths around the screen in the top left, top right, bottom right, and bottom left corners. And then to finish that path, all I need to do is right click and that will close it out. Now I'm gonna select all four of those points by pressing Control A and then grabbing one of these blue square handles. Dragging it inwards is going to round out my mask path more, but dragging it back out is going to straighten those out. I don't need any roundness to this, so I'm just gonna make them nice and straight. And then I wanna come over to the Essentials panel and click on Perspective. This will tell Mocha AE that we're looking for transformation, scale, rotation, skew, and perspective shifts within this track since the camera is moving around. Now, you'll notice that I have a green triangle right here in my timeline. This is a keyframe marker. That's what keyframes look like in Mocha. So this is my starting frame. I wanna track backwards first since there's less time here. So I'm just gonna click on this track backwards button and it's going to automatically just start tracking that data and doing a really good job of it. It's very quick. This isn't particularly a difficult track, but there are lots of tools in here that make things like obstructions, like this woman's face in front of this screen and her shoulder right here, much easier to deal with when tracking data. So if you're interested in learning more in-depth stuff about Mocha AE, be sure to go check out Boris Effects website and look at their training material.
You can also just come up to help and say video tutorials. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go forward and then track forward in time. And I'm gonna fast forward through this so that we can just get to the end result. And there we go. It did not take too much time at all to get through that track. And if I scrub through here, you can see that it is locked on there nice and solid. Now, one really cool thing about Mocha AE is that you do not have to use just the points that you tracked to use as tracking data. So if I click on this button right here that says show planar surface, these are the actual points that tracking data will be generated from for doing a simple corner pin screen replacement like this. So if I only wanted this part of the screen replaced, I could just put these four corners in the four corners of that section of the screen. And now when I scrub through this, you can see that that's locked in place. It's staying right where it's supposed to be. And this is the data we'll be able to pull into After Effects for replacing the screen. And we'll actually do that. We'll replace just this part of the screen. So I'm gonna align these four corners as closely as I can to the parts of the screen that I want to be replaced. Again, I'm holding down X to pan and Z to zoom while clicking and dragging. But now those four corner pins are placed and I'm gonna rename this layer screen just by double clicking on it and then clicking off of it. Now my track is set and I can just click the save button here and close the Mocha AE window. That data is automatically sent into After Effects and I can now access it using the tracking data section. So what I'm gonna do is just make a new solid layer and I'll call this screen, click OK and then go back to my video clip and say layer export to, and I'm gonna change the source to be that screen layer. Then I'll click create track data. It'll bring up this menu that'll ask me which tracking data I want to use, and I only had one track, so I'm gonna use that one, click okay, and then say apply export. And just like that, what's happened is the corner pin effect has been added to my screen layer and the tracking data has been applied to those four points based on what we set inside of Mocha AE. So if I scrub through here, now I have this perfect track of my solid on top of that screen. From here, all I have to do is go up to layer, pre-compose, and I'll call this screen, leave all the attributes in this comp. Then I can go into that screen and grab something that's a little bit more fun to add into that screen go back to Mocha AE, and just like that, I have a perfectly tracked screen replacement for that section of the screen. And now we've interjected some humor into this clip. Now, obviously with compositing, we could do a little bit more work to make this fit a little better. So I'll add a curves effect, bring down the brights a little, increase the dark so it's not so dark, and then just make everything a little bit cooler to match the mood of the scene. I'll take out red and green from the curves and increase the blue just a little bit and now that fits even just a little bit better. Now that is really crisp, so maybe I'll add a fast box blur right after that and just ever so slightly blur this, maybe just 0.2 pixels. That's even too much, I'll say 0.1. And now that might match the other screens a little bit. And obviously we could do some things to match the depth of field, but I'm not gonna go too crazy with that. The point is it was extremely easy to be able to add in that track data. If your motion has motion blur, then you could also add in a force motion blur effect, and that'll generate some pretty decent motion blur as well. Or you could do this even more simply by coming back to the Mocha AE effect and going to the export option. It's defaulted to corner pin, but there's also corner pin support motion blur. What this is going to do is instead of just using the corner pin effect to drive all that tracking data, it's going to separate out the position scale and rotation information as well, which is what After Effects can generate motion blur from. So I'm going to duplicate my screen, we'll call it screen two, and just get rid of the corner pin effect that's there. Choose that as my source layer, and then click apply export. Now I'll turn off the original screen, and I have tracking data on the position, scale, and rotation in addition to that corner pin. So if I zoom in nice and close, and go to a point where the camera's moving quite a bit, which this camera movement is very subtle, so there hardly is any motion blur at all, but maybe right about there is a good spot. I could enable motion blur and then go into my composition settings and go into the advanced tab and turn the shutter angle way up to just an extreme amount. Click OK and then zoom in one more time and turn that motion blur off and back on. The motion is so subtle that you can hardly notice, but there is a difference. And if your tracked source was moving faster than this motion blur, it would be visible. Now I'm gonna go ahead and undo, so we're back to where we were. 
And there's one more export option, which is transform. If I apply that again to my screen to copy, that's only going to apply the position scale and rotation data and no corner pin effect. So if you didn't need those corner pins, then this is how you could apply just those transform controls. All right, I'm gonna get rid of that second screen. And there's one more section in Mocha AE, which is this matte section. If I check on view matte, and I'll turn off that screen layer, this is going to show me the portion of the screen that was tracked. I'll turn that off and back on. That is where my mask was set in the Mocha application. But you can have any number of layers here in Mocha AE if you wanted to track multiple surfaces, give them different names. I could replace all of these screens if I wanted to. I could replace the ones in the background. I can even use Mocha AE to do rotoscoping to make complex selections of just a specific subject in this scene. With that done, you can choose which layers are visible by clicking on visible layers and turning these on and off to generate mats from and separate out into different mats in your scene in order to isolate specific parts of your footage to apply effects and adjustments however you want. You can also increase or decrease the feathering of that mat. You could invert the mask and you can even create After Effects masks. And as you can see, that generated a mask specifically for the screen. So I could say copy that mask by pressing M, copying that mask and applying it to a new solid, which we'll just call mask, paste, and switch my screen mask on that video source from add to none, then I could use this solid as an adjustment layer just by switching on the adjustment layer switch. And I could add something like a curves effect, again, to just brighten up the entire screen if I wanted to, or maybe I wanna add some kind of a glitch effect. Regardless, that mask is now aligned to exactly what I had set up in Mocha AE. So that's how you can do a very simple planar track using Mocha AE. Like I said, there's a whole lot more to this application that I could contain in one single video, but hopefully this gave you a quick understanding of what Mocha AE is, how to get started with it, and from here you can go view a lot more training to learn how to incorporate this into your workflow and make tracking much easier for you in After Effects. But that's everything you need to know about Mocha AE and Mocha Shape. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.